So, hi guys! Welcome again to another video of ours for the lesson natin for uh, today, no? And it's about Marple Annex 6, Prevention of Air Pollution from Ships. Okay, so basically we, ha we have already touched or discussed the Marple Annexes 1, 2, uh, 4 in the prelims and for our, for our midterms, coverage is uh, Annex 5 and Annex 6. As you can see in our course outline, we have a lot of topics left, you know? but it's actually uh, the, the topics left for the midterms are actually short uh, topics only. So don't you worry about the about, uh, uh, topics that we, uh, we have left no? or we need to run out of topics. No? So anyways, for our lesson for today, we have your Marple Annex 6 Prevention of Air Pollution from Ships. No, which is the sixth annex natin. If you will, if you can still remember what is our our, our annex one, sorry. Yes, and it's all about uh, vessel pollution by oil from ships. Annex two will be about noxious liquid substances. Three, harmful substances in package form. Four, sewage. Five, garbage. And the sixth one is about prevention of air pollution from ships. Uh, this Annex 6 no, of our Marple no, limits the main air pollutants contained in ships, exhaust gas, including sulfur oxides or tetaog natin SOX and the nitrous oxides natin which is your NOx and prohibits deliberate uh, emissions of ozone depleting substances. So tatlong uh, bagay or tatlong chemicals yung uh, as much as possible uh, tinatry na i-minimize nung ating Annex 6, no? We all know that ships burn uh, fuel. No? Of course, for, for, its, for its propulsion system, for the ship to run, di ba, kailangan mo ng propulsion system. And the propulsion system works with its diesel engine. Now, the diesel engine works with, of course, the combustion process of our bunker. And while, of course, we're burning the bunker, just like, you know, your cars that you are burning yung, di ba, yung gasolina niya. So, as the combustion process, of course, the the byproduct, no, or kumbaga yung, yung maging uh, kapalit nun ng, ng ating pag-burn ng fuel is the, of course, magiging, ano siya, magiging smoke, or magiging exhaust siya na gas, or kung sa iba yung mga pang suit, no, tinatawag natin suit, s o o -E. So, uh, the, the purpose why we have the Annex 6 is to prevent the pollution or air pollution from ships, no? which is uh, specifically uh, the exhaust of gas, no? including the sulfur oxide, the SOX, and the nitrous oxides, the NOx, and prohibits the deliberate, of course, emission of the ozone depleting substances. We all know the effect of these uh, chemicals that if they, they go up into our ozone layer, uh, ang magiging effect, of course, is that it that decreases the, the protective layer of our earth, of the earth, of course, and it, uh, it creates global warming. No? So as seafarers, hindi lang yung puro uh, marine environment yung focus ni Marpol. It also focus on the, the air as well. The purpose why uh, the focus uh, also sa air pollution then it's because ang magiging effect nun, no? Uh, the ship of course is the working is our working place at sea and uh, we should as much as possible we, we need to uh, eliminate or we need to as much as possible sorry not eliminate but to minimize the amount of pollution that is being produced of course by our workplace which is the ship, no? So, Marple Annex 6 also regulates shipboard incineration, being part of it, no? And the emission of volatile organic compounds, or the VOC, from tankers natin. So, uh, aside from the SOX, from the NOx, from the ODS, or for ozone de depleting substances, uh, we also regulate, or the Marple 6 also regulates the shipboard incineration, which is, um, incineration is the process of burning, no? Burning the wastes and as well as the emission of these volatile organic compounds from the tankers. Now, we have to, at the start of our, of our discussion, 
we will be unlocking some words or some terminologies as per our learning objectives, no? As per our learning objectives, we have to unlock some definition of terms. We have to uh, identify what are the uh, emission control areas, no? what are the NOx technical code, what are the sulfur content needed, what are the fuel oil requirements, as well as identification of the uh, seca areas natin or sa seca natin. The first word that we need to unlock is the, the word continuous feeding. No? When we say continuous feeding, it is defined as the process whereby waste is fed into a combustion chamber without human assistance while the incinerator is in normal operating conditions with the combustion chamber operative temperature between 850 degrees Celsius and 1,200 degrees Celsius. So with this one, uh, Continuous feeding, parang andun na mismo sa word niya, na continuous feeding, the, the process of uh, combustion on our chamber, no, uh, sa incinerator natin, uh, it is not assisted by, of course, by human, yun, hindi siya nilalagay. Kung baga, there is a certain equipment that we are using no, to, to, assist the, the, to assist with the, the feeding of our of our, I don't know, of our incinerator. You know? So that's what I'm going to say, continuous feeding, you know? without the human assistance, you know? without the human element feeding the, and the, our incinerator or operating our incinerator. We have your emission control area or some of the, uh, magiging seca to later on, you know? but emission control area mismo lang is uh, a sea area in which stricter controls we're established to minimize airborne emission from ships. So as much as possible, if you are in ECA no, or emission control areas, we need to minimize the, the, the pollution or the air pollution, of course, from ships. Later on, magiging SECA siya. No? SECA is a different, no? Because SECA will require you to have a lesser content of... Uh, lesser uh, sulfur content no, of our fuel no, or the whenever you will be emitting you will be uh, you know uh, having this uh, uh, pollution no there are certain requirements that ang yung smoke na binubuga ng barko mo should have a minimum amount of sulfur natin we have the word new installations no in relation to regu Regulation 12 of the Annex, it means installation of systems, equipment, 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 including new portable fire extinguishing units, insulation, or other material on a ship after the date on which this Annex enters into force, no? but excludes repair or, or recharge of previously installed uh, systems, equipment, insulation, or other material, or recharge portable fire extinguishing units. Now, what happens here, kasi, before, uh, of course, this is a new, this is a new, uh, tawag natin dito, this is a new Marple Annex, no? And, uh, of course, as the Marple Annex 6, no, entered into force in 2005, no? If I'm not mistaken, no? Uh, let me check. Entry. No, so yeah, it, it says here that our uh, our Annex Six entered into force on two thousand and five, no, and on two thousand five, no, before the two thousand five, there are uh, there are ships which are built, no, and some of the installations are already there, no. With, uh, later, uh, actually, if you have read the 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 handouts that I'm giving you, there are certain words like newly built ships, something like that, no? So, it is actually defined in the definition of terms of each annexes kung ano yung nabilong doon sa newly built ship, na, newly built ships na to. No? When it comes to new installations, uh, kumbaga installations na, na take place no? after, after 2005, no? There are ships kasi na still operable, uh, operating, no, operating na ginawa before the 2005. Like, I have one ship na 
uh, hindi siya ano hindi siya uh, kumbaga matagal na siya in service but not at really na mas matanda sa 2005 I think it's 2009 built ship or 2011 ship no so uh, still compliant siya with the 2005 uh, Marvel Annex 6 but there are still ships na medyo mas matanda no and they're just keeping on uh, uh, kumbaga pinapaganda or they're just installing new new installations or new equipments which will be uh, will make it compliant with the rules no natin so the new installations yun yung, yung ibig sabihin natin yung mga install natin or yung uh, needed natin na installation to meet the requirements of course of our annex 6 natin we have the NOx technical code no it means the technical code on control of emission of ni nitrogen oxides from uh, marine diesel engines adopted by conference resolution 2 as may be amended by the organization provided that such amendments are adopted and brought into force no so this NOx technical code actually is uh, included of course in our annex 6 no and uh, thereby nakalagay kung ano yung mga regulations kung ano yung certain requirements that should be met no for of course in, uh, in compliance with, with regards to the air pollution by, of course, the nit nitrogen oxides no? being created by our marine diesel engines. On our handouts that I have uh, uh, given to you, uh, state doon, no? or you can check, of course, your Marpol uh, annexes no? if you can download on the Google, no? just search on the Google, uh, Marpol annex. And access, no? Consolidated Marpol. There are mga PDF files done, and you can read actually, no? If you have time, uh, later on, no? Pag like, face to face na, the library has a copy of the Marpol Annex, or sorry, the Mar Consolidated Marpol Annex. So you can you can read there, yung mga technicalities ng mga ito. We have the ozone depleting substance substances, means controlled substances defined in paragraph four of Article one of the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer, no? Uh, of course, as, as I already explained, what is the effect of, of releasing this ozone depleting substances? Of course, it uh, makes our ozone layer thin, and as much as meron yung mga, uh, di ba, sinasabi nila na nagkakabutas na yung ating ozone layer, and the, there is a direct sunlight with, with, with uh, na pumapasok sa ating, sa ating mundo, no? And it affects us humans living, you know, of course, and on the earth, and it, uh, it, it creates a uh, climate change, change, no, which which is uh, hindi siya maging normal na yung buhay natin because of this climate change, no. Uh, we can actually minimize it. We can help, no, minimize the depleting of our ozone layer. If you will go through with our with your uh, ozone depleting substances, you may type it on your Google, ozone depleting substances, uh, Montreal Protocol, then ito yung lalabas. No? So you have your CFCs, very famous, no? if you burn plastic, no? uh, yun, uh, meron siyang CFCs, no? chlorofluorocarbon CFCs, uh, meron tayong halos dito, carbon tetrachloride, CCL, or methyl chloroform CHCl3, methyl bromide, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, and hydrofluorocarbons. No? Yun siya. So I know that you are familiar with some of the chemicals that are here, and these are actually from you know burning plastics, no, and uh, all the other uh, systems that can be found on board the the ship and as well as in our household. Sludge oil, no? When we say sludge oil, means sludge from the fuel or lubricating oil separators, waste lubricating oil from the main or auxiliary machinery, or waste oil from the bilge water separators, oil filtering equipment, or drip trays. Ito yung yung sinasabi natin that if you will separate the, the oil from the oily water, no? Oily water natin, mag nagiging sludge siya, no? put the sludge tank natin, no, and it becomes your sludge oil, no. So, uh, if you, for example, you will be, uh, you know, burning this one, no, or you will be dis uh, discharging, some, some, something like that, 
uh, you will be actually bounded by the annexes, no? So whichever stringent na annex would would be followed. But of course, burning such such sludges, no, no. Uh, of course, it's not allowed, no. We have uh, checkpoint incineration, means the incineration of waste or other matter on board a uh, ship, no. If such waste or other matter were generated during the normal operation of the ship, no, then uh, these are actually, uh, you know, undergoing the incineration process, no, with which uh, they are burned, you know, on our incinerator. Particulate matter, the term for a mixture of solid uh, particles and liquid droplets found in the air, you know. So, of course, you know, when there are certain uh, gas that is being, or exhaust that is being uh, uh, emitted, of course, by our ship, no? There are certain solid particles and liquid droplets that can be found uh, in the air as well, no? Or, or like, for example, if there are so exhaust ng mga tanks natin, or sa sort of mga vents, no? There are certain particles that can be found, solid particles or liquid particles as well. No? Uh, this uh, we call that one as our particulate matter. Volatile organic compounds are emitted as gases from certain solids or liquids no? or VOCs include a variety of chemicals, some of which may have short and long-term adverse health effects. No, yung sinasabi nila na for example, if you're a tanker guy daw. Because there are tanker effect. I don't know what's with with the, that really that they're you know uh, big thing ng ibang ng ibang tao. And probably siya sabi nila na oh uh, sa tanker medyo mas delikado sa tanker. It's actually mas delikado talaga. No, but the safety on board the tankers are really heightened. No, mas sabi nga ng isang kong friend mas safety daw kung nasa tanker because mas grabe yung mas stringent yung mga regulations when it comes sa oil tankers natin no uh, we proceed with us the, the sur surveys and inspections no uh, we have a lot of surveys that is be conducted on board the ship yun yung nakakatawa if you're a seafarer uh, sabi nila baka you know uh, haya haya yung buhay ng mga seafarers but we actually deal with a lot of inspections and surveys no uh, as you can if you can still remember there are some annexes actually that would require you to have a service and inspections no sometimes it, it comes into a package parang package that we're in uh, for that certain cer uh, for that certain annexes for that certain equipment for, for that certain uh, annexes no uh the conduct ng survey no and separately for the ating certificate no for our air pollution prevention certificate natin we have this uh, survey as well that is being conducted no and this survey is conducted for 400 gross tonnage and above and of course for our uh, covered by the annex 6 natin no you can check your handouts if what are other uh, platforms or sorry uh, other other i don't know that is covered by the the Annex 6. No? So we have your initial survey, you have your annual surveys, intermediate survey, renewal survey, and additional survey. You notice, meron tayong five year cycle for our certificate or for our compliance of our uh, Annex 6. No? If you can notice, uh, five years no? bago ka mag renew ng iyong certificate. No? Before your ship, no, before your ship will be set to sail or you, you, uh, matawag dito, o mag-set ka ng, uh, mag, mag, maiden voyage yung ship mo, then, uh, magkakaroon ng initial survey. And for your ship to sail, no, you need to pass all the surveys and inspections, no. So the, the survey that is being conducted, no, before anything else, the initial survey, then annually, there are surveys that is being conducted, no? And intermediate surveys as well. The intermediate survey at the middle, no? And the surveys are usually conducted three months before or uh, can be three months after kasi depende naman sa voyage, no? Because sometimes if the ship 
no is in a not convenient port and walang mga surveyors na available then uh there may parang meron meron siyang um, grace period na parang parang kadugit kumbaga and we have additional surveys no when it comes to initial survey uh, before the ship is put into service, ito yung sinasabi ko, or before the certificate is issued for the first time. Tawag natin sa kanya is initial survey. After five years, no, the certificate means uh, it is expiring every five years. After five years, magkakaroon tayo ng renewal survey. No? And, and then in the next five years, renewal survey as well. No? Uh, what, what are you doing sa initial survey? No? You, are, you are ensuring that the equipment and the systems, the fittings, arrangement, and material fully complied with the applicable requirements of the Annex 6 as well. So, ano yung mga equipment sa nandun? Yung mga incinerator natin, yung diesel engine natin, sinecheck natin kung uh, ano yung mga equipment sa related na nandun, no? Mga fittings natin and arrangements natin if it is compliant with the Annex 6. Six, no? All the listed uh, requirements actually can be found on the on the marple, no, on the marple itself, no. And uh, what's next? Renewal survey, no. After, as I said, after five years, nagkakaroon tayo ng another survey. At the inter inter intervals specified, of course, by the administration natin. Ang administration is your flag of registry natin, no. Kung saan nakaregister si Barco, then doon, uh, that, is, that would be your administration natin, your administration na mag in charge sa barko natin, no? It ensures that the equipment, systems, fittings, and arrangements are, and materials fully comply with applicable requirements of the Annex, of course. So as you can see, parang same siya with the initial survey, but of course, you're doing it after five years. So every five years, magkakaroon tayo na uh, parang general survey for our ship, of course, no? Uh, intermediate survey natin within three months before or after. Ito yung sinasabi natin. The second anniversary date or within three months before or after the third anniversary. So as you can see, it's in the middle. So it will be either on the second year or on the third year. No? So on the second and on the third year natin, you'll be having your intermediate survey wherein three months before uh, ng annual survey mo on the second year, or on the third year, no, pwede kang mag-conduct ng intermediate survey na 10, no? And, uh, but shall take place one of the annual surveys, no? So, pwede siya, hindi na mag-conduct ng annual survey, yun na lang, yung intermediate survey na yun. So, what is happening sa intermediate survey ensures the equipment and arrangements fully comply with the applicable requirements. So, medyo mas lesser yung, uh, number of requirements that you check. Of course, if this one monitors, no, if you are complying still with the Annex 6, kumbaga parang monitoring, no, if you are compliant still with the Annex 6, no, annual survey as well, you know, within three months before each, before each, after each anniversary date of the certificate, including general inspection, no, of the equipment, system, fittings, arrangements, and material to ensure that they have been maintained, no, um, monitoring that the maintenance is ongoing, no? We monitor if you are maintaining the equipments or the, the fittings related to Annex 6 if you are complying with us with the regulations that we have. Additional survey, no? It's either general or partial. It will be according to the circumstances and shall be made after a repair resulting from investigations. So, if nagkaroon tayo ng repair, no? Uh, or something na may may ginawa tayo, may pinagawa tayo sa barko natin, no? Uh, we need to conduct an additional survey natin. Of course, to check, no, if you are compliant with the Annex 6. The certificate that's being issued by by the surveyors or by the inspectors natin, no? To, to certify that your ship is in compliance with the Annex 6, now we have your IAPP certificate, which is your International Air Pollution Prevention Certificate. Now, an International Air Pollution Prevention Certificate shall be issued after an initial or renewal survey. Take note, the first time that you will be conducted by that survey about Annex 6, you'll be given the IAPP certificate. 
every anniversary day, you know, your, your certificate is still valid, of course. But if you are not, of course, uh, compliant with the uh, with the uh, inspections being conducted to your ship, of course, your ship will be detained, no? Or you will uh, you will not be allowed to sail after five years. The certificate needs to be renewed, no? So if on the fifth year you don't have inspections, you will not be renewing your IATP certificate. But don't you worry, you still have uh, three months before and after na panugat for you to conduct the survey. No? So who uh, takes this uh, uh, our IPP, no? or who needs this IPP certificate? Any ship thou of 400 gross tonnage and above no? engaged in voyages or to ports or offshore terminals under the jurisdiction of other parties. Now what happens with the lesser 400 degrees depende po yun sa administration kung ano po yung mga requirements na i-require nila. Platforms and drilling rigs engaged in voyages to waters under the sovereignty of or jurisdiction of other parties to the protocol of 1997. So even the platforms and oil uh, drilling rigs still need to comply with the uh, Annex 6 ng Marpol natin. Uh, an international air pollution survey that after the initial renewal survey, I already told you this, and about also this one. No? So, certificate shall be issued or endorsed either by the administration no? or by any person or organization duly authorized by it. Uh, ito na po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo that a certain uh, administration will be in charge no? of of releasing this uh, IATP certificate natin. No? And they, they're the ones who will uh, conduct no, the the ship inspection, of course, no, if you're compliant with the Annex 6, no? So, the emission, let's go with the NOx technical code. As I said, that is being included in our Annex 6, no? The emission of nitrogen oxides calculated is the total weighted uh, emission of NO2 from the engine is within the following limits. So, dapat yung... Uh, engine natin no, should meet the following limits no? and further uh, explanation can be found on your handouts. So when using the fuel no, composed of blends from hydrocarbons derived from petroleum refining, test procedures and measurement methods shall be in accordance with the NOx technical code. No? So dapat in compliance with the NOx technical code, no, ang ating uh, uh, paggamit ng fuel natin which is composed of blends from hydrocarbons no? or derived from the petroleum refining. Uh, NOx technical code, no? Ex ex exhaust gas cleaning system. The According to the NOx technical code natin, no? your ship needs to have exhaust gas cleaning system no? approved, of course, by the administration in accordance with the NOx technical code natin. Exhaust gas cleaning system uh, as well defines uh, itself, no, the exhaust gas no, cleaning system. No? It, it cleans the exhaust gas, no. Uh, of course, uh, na any exhaust or nilalabas ni emit no emission ng ating bato. Let's go with the sulfur content, no. That should be uh, found in your exhaust, no. The the sulfur content of any fuel oil used on board the ship shall not exceed 4.5. Now the magiging effect kasi, no, if you will burn, burn. If you burn, sorry, the, the oil, no, fuel oil, then if a sulfur content non mataas, no, then it affects also the exhaust gas that will be producing, no. And as a general rule for our Annex 6, uh, the sulfur content of your oil shall not be exceeding 4.5% by mass, no, shall not exceed. 4.5 by mass, no? regardless kung nasaan ka. So, the worldwide average sulfur content of residual fuel oil supplied for use on board the ship shall be monitored, no? taking into account guidelines to be developed by the organization or the International Maritime Organization. So, they are monitoring the sulfur content of all the, the 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 bunker oils that or the fuel oil that's being used on board the ship. 
they're actually very familiar with the use of sulfur, no? Like for example, when I was on board, uh, you need really to take note of the, if for example, you are entering the ECA line of the US, then you have to, as much as possible, change over kapag gumagamit ka ng fuel mo na mataas yung sulfur content niya. Uh, then you have to switch to LSFO or yung pa low sulfur content, no? So, yun. Uh, you are changing the, the the fuel that you are using because uh, still, uh, there are areas uh, sa, sa, sa sea areas natin that the uh, the high sulfur content, no, is allowed, no? Provided, of course, that it will not exceed to 4.5 by mass. Now, there are se seca no, or so SOX emission control areas na bubulol ako, no? uh, which is your uh, North Sea natin, no? including the Baltic, Baltic Sea, including the North Sea, and as well as the U.S. Uh, uh, dito, U.S. ports no, natin. I'll discuss further kung ano mga seca areas natin dito. And there are two actually SOX emission control areas natin or the SECA, SECA stands for SOX, Sulfur Oxides Emission Control Areas natin, which is your Baltic Area, North Sea Area, and of course, ang uh, mga various US ports, we'll discuss later on kung ano ibig sabihin natin ito. Now, what, uh, if you are a ship no, traveling on the SECA or the SOX Emission Control Areas natin, no? The sulfur content of fuel oil used on board ships in a seca should not exceed 1.5 by mass. Now, this time, as you can see, it's lesser compared to our 4.5 requirement for for anywhere, no, on board, uh, anywhere, any sea area rather, no. An exhaust gas cleaning system as well is required if you are in a seca, no, and there is a reduced uh, total emission of sulfur oxide as well, which is um, the requirements for the diesel uh, the diesel engine mo has been switched also into a more stringent requirement. You may check your handouts actually, it's all there. When it states kung ano yung mga mas stringent na requirements na nire require. Uh, the sulfur content of fuel oil shall be documented by the supplier as required by the regulation 18 of the annex. So, uh, your supplier, for example, Shell or whatever, kung ano man yung Petron, I don't know, no? kung ano yung mga supplier natin, the, the, the content of the fuel oil should be documented and it should be handed over to your chief engineer no? whenever you are on board the ship. No? And they are you know, giving you the bunker fuels, then you have to, as much as possible, secure the certificate or you secure the documents that, that states kung ano yung sulfur content no? or how much is the sulfur content of the fuel oil that you are using. Now, when it comes to fuel oil quantity requirements, no? the fuel oil shall be blends of hydrocarbons derived from petroleum refining. No? And this shall not preclude the incorporation of small amounts of additives no? intended to improve some aspects of performance. No, so additives, putting additives on our fuel oil shall not be, of course, no, shall not be allowed natin. No? The fuel oil shall be free from inorganic acid. No? So this is uh, important na, na the detail or kumbaga na the characteristic ng fuel oil that you will be using on board the ship that it should be free of inorganic acids. No? And should not include any added substances or chemical waste, which will jeopardize the safety of the ship and is harmful to the personnel who is working on it, and which will contribute to the general pollution. No? So, yung tatlong yun is uh, very important then as well. Aspect na they are looking into. Now, the, bunk, the bunker delivery note, no? uh, details of fuel oil, for combustion purposes not delivered to and used on board shall be recorded by means of a bunker delivery note. So you have a bunker delivery note, 
and it should include the details of fuel and oil for, of course, the combustion uh, per, uh, for, for combustion purposes delivered to and used on board the ship. So, meron tayong form uh, for company na tinatawag natin bunker delivery note. So, whenever a certain bunker arrives on board the ship and if you put it, if you put it on the tank, no? So, you are indicating it kung ang location ng, ng, ng bunker na yun, kung nasang tank siya, and as well as uh, what are the super content, no, no content, or the chemical compounds that can be found on that certain bunker. So, to generalize, no, or to, to wrap up things, no, Annex 6, no, includes air pollution, air pollution from ships. And there are certain uh, requirements that we are that we are uh, following. Uh, I forgot to discuss about the second. So allow me to share. Allow me to share this uh, emission control areas natin, your, or your ECA natin. No? So it states here, as you can see, that the Marple Annex entered into force into 19 May 2005. And uh, there are protected areas, which we are calling it as your sulfur emission control areas natin, natin or ECAS natin, no? SECAS or ECAS natin, which is your uh, Baltic Sea, including the North Sea area as well. And later on, uh, we will, you, if, as you can see, they have actually included, no, on March 26, 2010, the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, amended the International Convention, no, the MARPOL, and then, uh, they included the U.S. and French, U.S. Canadian and French waters for the emission control area natin or the ECA natin. No? So there is a certain ECA line na tinatawag natin. No? Uh, allow me to search. So ECA line. ECA line. No? So whenever your ship passes through that ECA line, no? uh, hanap tayo ng picture, uh, for example, ito. No? So whenever your ship enters the ECA line, no? merong certain na uh, uh, not that really particular or not that very that verse with that, uh, uh, before entering the ECA line, no? you need to uh, change over. That's why sinasabi sa'yo ni Chief Engineer whenever you are the duty officer on the bridge that you need to inform him if at, 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 if you'll be, uh, you know, a certain distance no, or a certain hours from the ECA line. No, Nagmo-monitor din si Chief Engineer niyan. Lagi siyang umaakit dun sa bridge and they are checking if uh, you are entering the ECA line, if you're entering the... The, the chief engineers, they know actually they're well versed in this ECA line uh, protocols as well, no? So, yun. So, going back here, so, yes po, nag, nagkaroon na, ng ECA natin sa, sa US, no? Canadian waters natin as well, no? And as well as in December 2015, no? The Chinese government indicated the ECA areas as well, no, for their uh, ano, sa, sa, sa territory nila, no. To date, they they we have actually the SECA, no, which is your Baltic Sea and the North Sea and English Channel, which uh, came into force on the following dates, so we have the 2005 and 2007. And later on, 2012, no, medyo marami-raming pumasok. Meron mo si U.S. Coast, no, East Coast, and the West Coast natin, West Coast and the East Coast, as well as with the Hawaiian Islands, no, because they're, of course, the territory of uh, U.S., no. The California made a uh, strict rule also when it comes to uh, emission control, the Caribbean as well, the Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, no which came into force into 2014. So still, there are some areas that we didn't discuss as of now with the IMO regarding the uh, establishing of ECA no, on their territorial boundaries. Natin. So uh, as, as to wrap up, as I said, 
uh, we have regulations that we need to follow whenever whenever we're talking about uh, air pollution from ships and we are issued by IAPP or International Air Pollution uh, Prevention Certificates no? to, to check if you're in, compliant, in compliance with Annex X. Okay? If you have questions, if you have concerns, please don't forget or please do uh, leave me a message on my Facebook Messenger on the M rooms. Apologies if you know I cannot accommodate all your questions. Just keep on you know uh, sending me messages. You know if you have questions, I'm very willing to answer. If it takes time, I'm so very sorry because a lot of you are messaging me and. I, I'm so overwhelmed with the number of messages that I've been I am receiving every day, no? So sometimes, you know, I cannot respond immediately, but I will, no, I am trying my best to respond to your messages. No? So apologies if I cannot if I cannot uh, answer your messages, no? And uh, do please, please do give me a private message on the Androids as well if you have questions. My email ad I have been giving you, my email ad. Yeah, that is uh, for uh, for for uh, always open for your, your communications for your questions as well. And if you're finding difficulty with our subject, please do message me, communicate with me, and uh, I will be very willing to answer your questions. Okay, and please do give a message, uh, give a comment, no, so that I uh, I will be able to know that you had watched this video until the end. No? Congratulations for watching this video until the end. No, it's actually, how many minutes now? It's 41 minutes and you are still watching this video. Congratulations for watching for, for watching this video. I will be giving you some merits, no? I will be giving you some merits. Put your name on the comment section. Or if not, just comment. No, any questions? Or I know with you, just comment, no? Something. On the comment section, I'll be giving you points on my class. You know, this video is supplementary to my class, and if you're watching this, that's very good. It's very fine. Okay. So apologies if I have I have uploaded this video a little bit late, but I hope that you have learned something, and I'll see you on the next video topic that we have. Thank you so much, and see you. Goodbye, and stay, and stay safe. Thank you so much.